please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. Morning folks, today we are back in the workshop and if you look behind me you might be able to see Matt. Um, Morning guys. We are swapping the battery in that for a 40 kilowatt hour, that's our 24. We've just done a leaf spa on it, 90% uh, state of health. It was originally 84 when I first started using it, so through use that state of health has actually has actually gone up. So right now Matt's recovering the um, the gas from the air conditioning system because the EMV has thermal management of a sort. So uh, we're going to recover that and um, and then get the pack out, so and get it upgraded, which is great news for us. My task in this is that um, we're to the right of the engine bay. The wiring loom going down there, um, just behind that uh, that brake line, is uh, the battery wiring loom. Um, and what I need to do is find the can lines that come out of that. Get two pieces of twin core. If you can see where that screwdriver is going through just there, we're going to poke them through there. The Cambridge is going to live inside, and that's going to be our break in the loom. It's not quite as easy as a leaf because... Um, uh, most of it's external on the EMV, so um, yeah, so I'm going to do that and feed them through. Um, Matt's got the Cambridge. He's going to add some software to it, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's where we're at so far. Let's see how far you get. <laughs> that's it. Van's going up in the air. It's all empty at the moment. Nothing in there. Quick look underneath. Spare wheel. We took that off. So pretty. Pretty much of a muchness. There's the under trays which we're going to pull off. All similar to the leaf. Well, it's based on a leaf, so you'd like to think so. So, right. Let's get that can line sorted. Okay, so I've just made this wiring loom here, which um, I've covered with, uh, let's just get some focus on that, uh, which I've covered with exterior wiring loom tape because predominantly. Uh, the majority of it is going to be outside the vehicle. Now, um, we deliberately use two different types of um, two different types of wiring. That's just so we can we can identify what's what when it comes through the other side. So uh, there's no faffing around. I don't have to get the multimeter out and start testing and ohms tests and all that business. So that's going to be our wiring loom that goes from the can wiring at the battery up to the Cambridge and back down from the Cambridge to the battery. So that's that. So uh, better get it uh, in place and uh, and wired in underneath. There's your thermal management of such. There's basically uh, an evaporator inside and a small hamster-looking wheel which blows cool air all over the uh, the power electronics and over to the over the modules. Here's your uh, HV connections and then there's the LV harness that we want to get involved in. I am going to apologise that I'm filming this on my mobile phone because. I've turned up with my camera and no memory card, so it's going to be a bit rough and ready. But yeah, that's what it looks like so far. So just in here, um, you can see that I've wired uh, the can line up and the can line back. Uh, that's going to be our interruption in the lines. And then my wiring loom's just hanging up here. So, uh, sorry about the, uh, the camera. Like I say, it's my mobile phone. So now I'm gonna um, tie this off up here, feed it uh, up there and then through the bulkhead further up and then into the cab and then I'm gonna start working up in the cab. Okay, so there we go. I've just added some um, engine bay wiring loom tape and this we use because it's waterproof. Uh, so it's, uh, it stands anything that you can do to it and it also it's rub proof, so any of that, it's... Uh, it resists that as well so right I'm gonna get it fed into the cab if you look down there you might be able to see my wiring loom coming up uh, and going around there and then it just goes in through the wiring loom there we've just linked it into the same place so that's all tied away now and if I go around to the side you the wiring loom comes through here it comes through under the glove box and then um, underneath here I've soldered and heat shrunk and this bit here goes into the Cambridge um, this is obviously our earth pin and then this is our 
uh, 10 amp pickup, uh, 10, well 10 amp but uh, 12 volt uh, pickup that goes into the fuse board. So we're going to get that wired in now and then flash some software and then change the battery. Now we're at the point where, if I just zoom in there, see the cam bridge hanging down and the wiring just uh, in front of the pedal box there. Uh, Matt's just got the laptop just here um, and he's running some software off it which seems to be working and then we're going to rewrite that software and um, yeah and then we can uh, rip the battery out. Yeah that's the plan. The pack is out, that's the reg of my van. So it's 90% state of health and 40% state of charge. So this will probably eventually go back in this van when we get the UBEX in there. We'll have to wait and see. But if we look under the van, you can see that it's in absolutely, as normal, pristine condition. Really, really tidy. It's actually been quite well maintained before we had it. We can see where it's been serviced and it's had some work done. So uh, yeah, we're just... Um, waiting for the uh, the software to put back into the Cambridge and then the 40 kilowatt hour pack will go in and we'll be away to go. Just wheeling the new battery underneath the van. Trying to record this from my mobile phone is uh, interesting. Trying to get it straight. All right, let's get that pumped up. Just uh, finish up putting the HV wiring on, Matt's attaching the LV harness there. And that's it, so that's heater, traction, and uh, air conditioning. So yeah, good to go. What I'm doing here is I am just flashing the software into that little device, which you might have just seen. I'll do it again. There we go. That's how long it takes, a couple of seconds. So we did have a few dramas. Um, this fan, prior to our ownership, has been used uh, for various different things. Anyway, it, it had um, some gubbins wired in down here in the fuse board. Um, I, th I think it had a tracker, it had a camera wired in and things like that. And in all honesty, they made a bit of a hash of the board. And what that did was that left us with a, uh, where we thought we had a permanent 12 volt feed, which historically there always has been. We didn't have, um, of course. And then when we come to power the van up, it was, um, it was not showing us what we wanted to see. So um, a little bit of diagnosis. And um, yeah, we've, uh, we found that. So easy mistake to make because we just made the assumption it would be there like it normally is and and it wasn't and it's very easy just to bypass them things and then you start thinking oh there's something more sinister going on and when you do the uh, you do the basic checks like the fuses and things like that you find you've got no power so that's what we've done um, I'm currently working on my own at the moment because Matt's had to nip off for a little while he is coming back but um, we've done all the HV work now so it's uh, this is all just 12 volt stuff and uh, you'll see the Cambridge oh. You'll see the Cambridge sat just here. That's uh, that's now powered up. It's got a little light on it correctly, and uh, it's doing what it's meant to be doing. So I'm well chuffed about that because I was uh, I was uh, yeah stressing a little bit to be honest. Vans back up in the air. Under trays to go back on, and then regas the aircon system, and then that should be it. I'll be taking it home again, which I'm quite looking forward to. So about 15 minutes and we should be on the road. Van's back on the floor as you can see. I'm just um, gassing the system up there. You can see that it's putting the oil in. Uh, this, is, this normally takes about uh, five minutes, something like that. It takes 450 grams of uh, 1234 YF. So, um, and also the oil that goes in the system is hybrid oil, not standard, just because it's electric. But uh, yeah, so fingers crossed, this should be it. It should be done and we should be up the road in uh, I said 15 minutes earlier, but I'm going to say half an hour. So, uh, yeah, looking good. Let's give you a quick shot of our van. It's looking mighty splendid. I do love the van. 
So uh, you should see that out and about very, very soon. So, right, I'm gonna crack on. Okay, it's done. So I'll just show you uh, inside. You can have a look at uh, the range estimation there. So showing one, two, three miles. So fingers crossed, we we get to see that sort of range. Um, I'd expect, realistically, in an EMV with this update, I'd expect about 110 to 115 this kind of year. So fingers crossed, everything's going to be good. I'm going to road test it home now, about 70 miles, and uh, I'll let you know how it's got on. I am not home. I'm actually sat on a rapid charger because uh, we wanted to test that it would rapid charge okay since we've done the uh, we've done the modification and it's rapid charging fine. Uh, I, actually, it was 60 miles exactly from uh, Cleveland to uh, the rapid charger that I use quite often in the Neaton, and I got here with 55 miles remaining. So that's not bad considering I left with 82% state of charge. So. From my perspective, that is a very, very worthwhile upgrade, and fingers crossed, it's going to work well. So yeah, well impressed, well impressed. So I'll be back in the van uh, from Monday. I've got a job to do tomorrow, so I won't be using this one. But um, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Well impressed. So big thumbs up to that. Please remember to like and subscribe, and follow us on Twitter at KPhantom and at Cleveley underscore Mobile. And we'll see you soon in another episode. So bye for now.